Шановні колеги, до програми. Good morning, dear colleagues. We continue our working day and we'll talk about the organization and participation of the Ukrainian business and cultural environment in an unofficial level in the World Exhibition Expo 25 in Milan. Uh, Irina Tereshenko will talk to us, who is a visionary project for Nova Ukraine. Tatiana Jafarova, volunteer, co-founder of NGO Narodny Til, People's Rear. Sergei Marchuk, volunteer, regional representative of Linus Nego in Ukraine and Russia. And Svetlana Kazanchuk, volunteer and expert group coordinator at visionary project Nova Ukraine, new country. Good morning, everybody. For some, uh, this is a day already. I am a coordinator of this project. And, uh, of course, there is a lot happening in our country. We know that many people are worried, majority of people are worried by our major problems. However, life goes on, and there are such things as the development of business, the development of culture, the raising of the spirit of our country. And uh, three months ago, we have all got to know that there is a global international exhibition expo, which happens once uh, five years, and its uh, history is more than 100 years. And this is a large-scale, huge, event that countries take part in. This is not a narrowly specialized exhibition, and uh, countries show the achievements there. Regrettably, the situation is such that in 2011, Ukraine agreed to take part in the exhibition, but then something was probably being prepared, and in 2014, when the exhibition actually started on the 1st of May in 2015 and lasts until the 1st of uh, October, and it's in Milan this time. So by the end of 2014, Ukraine said that, that it would not participate in the exhibition, although this is a unique opportunity in the center of Europe where more than 160 countries of the UN come and a lot of participants want to show what's happening in their countries and the topic of the exhibition is uh, very close to Ukraine. Feed the planet and uh, everybody knows that Ukraine has a huge potential to feed not only ourselves but probably half a world and of course when we got to know about this, our first idea was to address all our official ministers, but we got a classical answer, there's no money. However, when we talked to many officials, we saw that probably there's no desire. Although there are some objective reasons, as you can always find some opportunities to realize a lot of things. So we joined in communicating with our officials and we started to also communicate with the organizers of the exhibition in Milan to get to know how we can take part if officially Ukraine refused to participate. So over two months of uh, active volunteer work, several formats were prepared which are soon a, an opportunity for business, for a uh, cultural figure, for those who say that let's uh, show Ukraine, let's uh, do, let's attract investment to Ukraine. And this can be realized on the European plane. We were able to talk to Italy and they agreed to provide us with a day in uh, Italian pavilion to hold an international business conference where we could show to the world what we can do. First of all, in our agrarian business, and we need 
first of all our agrarian associations then there is a unique format uh, free of charge one of the pavilions that represents grain offered us a free participation free space you should understand that countries build huge pavilions there in order to represent uh, their achievements in the food sector but we were offered this opportunity for free so that ukraine could show our country our culture our cuisine and Tatiana will tell you in more detail about this opportunity. Good morning, I am Tanya Jafarova. Apart from telling you about an opportunity of a cultural program in Grain Cluster, I was personally on the construction site of Expo, and this is something special. For me, it was very important to go to those construction sites and uh, other sites and see how this can happen. There were also negotiations with Italians who provided us with an opportunity. Uh, but apart from the grain cluster, we have an opportunity to to rent a floor in the general pavilion and show what Ukraine is. As far as grain cluster is concerned, well, we cannot exhibit there on a commercial basis. There is a condition that Ukraine can show our cuisine and culture, but not on the commercial basis. So we would like very much apart from uh, showing how people know us to arrange a city of uh, craftsmen there where there will be potters and other people engaged in crafts they will show what ukraine already knows uh, is known for i would like our modern art our modern cinema cinema go there there are walls where we can arrange painting exhibitions and uh, we would like to get our cultural figures interested those who are known in the world maybe Svetoslav Vokarchuk will answer our call we would like very much him to stage a concert there because there's a uh, stage there we would also like to show our innovative technologies so that uh, we arrange there a day of modern art and culture because a lot of uh, young people in ukraine do a lot of things that we don't uh, see from graffiti to some 3d there are magic spectacles that when you put them on you can see yourself uh, in 3d where the film will be made we would like to film a video about ukraine that would engage you you put on the glasses and uh, for five minutes you're going walking around our country which not everyone can visit we know the company that is ready to do this so we have a lot of uh, negotiations now with uh, different companies and groups but we should already assemble a team who would be able to do this who will be inspired about this like we are I often go to Italy because of my work, this is my favorite country, and you know, they do everything in a very easygoing matter, manner. I was there two weeks before the opening, and you can go on a central early on car because you just cannot walk around walk the territory in a day i call everybody 
to go there and see what's what's happening there even if you, you can't take part as a participant very interesting that this is in the center of Europe because the previous exhibition was in Shanghai and of course this is a different kind of uh, money to go there this is the first year when Ukraine refused to build its own pavilion taking into account that Italy is near that Italy does not cost as much to visit I do invite everybody to go there Hi, I am Sergei Marchuk. I represent an Italian firm in Ukraine and Russia, and I'd like to say, and I'd like to say that, on the one hand, it's very sad that in Ukraine not only business but uh, ordinary people do not know that such a serious international forum takes place and maybe uh, especially devoted to one of the three major topics for ukraine the topic of uh, food it is important for ukraine not only from the point of view that this is a topic for today, but because of the problems that the world is experiencing and will experience even sharper, the topic of uh, lack of food, this topic could become one of uh, long-term topics for the Ukrainian business and uh, Ukraine as a civilization in order to occupy its place in the structure of the world that's become to that's began to get formed within the last two days and will continue to do so in the nearest future ukraine's opportunities to deliver food to the world market and we don't uh, speak just of Europe and Northern Hemisphere, but we are also talking about Africa, where the problem of uh, food is constant. I think that this topic should, first of all, concern the Ukrainian state figures who should think about the strategic development of their country. But as you heard, the state refused to take part so we are looking for representatives of uh, Ukrainian business who link their future to Ukraine, who see the strategic significance of uh, the food sector for the future of the country, who want to build a uh, society comfortable for everyone in Ukraine and who understand that the presence of uh, investment in Ukraine is, first of all, the government for the comfortable environment of living for everyone who lives in Ukraine. Of course, there's uh, manufacturing, there's investment from uh, the world and salary for people, which is critical in uh, for obvious reasons for the entire country and its citizens and in this way development will happen and the biggest value that there is in the world now becomes bigger the human capital so what we want to do, what we need to do, is to find representatives of uh, the business who will be ready with us to take part in this event. On the second hand, this is a global goal that we will find people who are a bit mad like we are, who will try to undertake this burden 
we understand that this is rather difficult. We understand that the situation in the country is difficult, that the country is in war, at war. But we do hope that we will find such people more than that. We do have several companies that expressed uh, willingness to work on this project with us. However, the money that those companies are ready to organize, uh, uh, to give to organize the Ukrainian participation is not enough. Uh, well, we have an opportunity. We have people who would uh, like and uh, are prepared to go, but we do need more. And that's why we asked to organize this briefing for us to try to ring the alarm and bell. There is an opportunity. The SIM is Ukrainian. It is linked to the development of the country. Please join us. Let's try to do something that will make a contribution into the development of our country, into the future of our children. Everybody understands that uh, children is the main thing and will try to create a country for them where they will be com comfortable living. Irina Tereshenko, in order to sum up, I'd like to once again say a very important thing about the scale of the event. Everyone who probably became interested from among uh, the concerned people who understand that uh, money should go here to Ukraine, that uh, goods with uh, added value should go from here. The scale of this event and we have specific figures, every day up uh, no less than 200,000 people come there. And uh, they expect that the total number of visitors will exceed 20 or maybe even 30 million. This is a rather global exhibition. Yes, we said that the state has uh, refused to participate, but we still met some people, and we thank the team who are working now. We are not alone in doing things in this sphere. We have people who do support us, and of course there are people among you who work in some firms who have their own business, who have some talent, who take part in uh, culture. Let's not wait when uh, someone will give us something. Let's use this opportunity. If you have ideas, we offer you formats. We cannot do everything on our own without you. We invite everyone who is interested in this uh, idea. We invite you on the 21st of May at the Chamber of Commerce of Ukraine at 33 Velika Zhitomirska Street. We invite everyone. There will be a round table where we will discuss uh, real practical steps and what we will do. Even if you don't take part in the exhibition, if you have a uh, friend who may be interested, just call them and invite them to this round table, and then no one will be able to say that Ukraine didn't have an opportunity and the state didn't do nothing, didn't do anything, and we were just sitting on our hands. I think that this is our first briefing, but not the last, because a lot of uh, very interesting projects uh, are being born, and we would be glad if more and more people get to know about this. 
if you probably would like to sum up, but if you don't want to, then there may, may be questions from journalists. Oh, Svetlana wants to say something. Svetlana Kazanchuk. Just one brief remark. When we talk about volunteer projects, about uh, the exhibition, about the presence of Ukraine, what is important to understand is that when we tell you about this project, we are not talking about raising funds. We don't say just come here and you should become our promoters. No, we as a team of volunteers are just a not numerous team. What we are showing now to the companies, we are building a grounds of uh, opportunity. For three months, we've been trying to work out formats and opportunities that uh, Ukrainian culture and Ukrainian business may join with an understanding that there are often different priorities as far as the country is concerned and of course there is a lot of other tasks but if anyone feels sense they have an opportunity just don't wait until you'll have to say that uh, you had an opportunity but squandered it our task is to open on an open palm of our hand to show you and our colleagues our compatriots the that ukraine does have real chance that we can easily use so as ira said on the 21st of may there will be a uh, discussion at the chamber of commerce we won't offer you an open a ready solution we won't show you any large-scale uh, measures we just draw an opportunity and we call upon everyone to join us it's very pleasant to see such enthusiasm, and we have a first question. Vyacheslav Rychko, an entrepreneur. I talked to Tatiana already. It's very good that you don't stop and you're moving forward. It's very sad that all the four participants are volunteers and there is no representative from the state today. I think that we should uh, insist on uh, the state participation in this. And my question is to Svetlana. You're talking about a film about Ukraine in 3D. Is there an understanding about the budget of uh, this five-minute uh, video? Because I think that this is uh, the first thing that we should show about the country and how much time the production of this mo uh, film could take. Well, honestly, we planned to stage a separate briefing about this format and uh, to invite their people who are already working on this as our time here is limited. Uh, we can prepare this uh, film within three or four weeks. We're talking about Ukraine's participation uh, for August and uh, September. In principle, we still have some time. We wanted to take 30 or 40 Samsung masks for people who would come to the grain cluster who would then immerse into Ukraine and then they would say, oh, I want to go there, I want to know more about this country. And the price for one such mask is uh, approximately $1,000 and the production of the film is from forty to sixty thousand dollars we can start this 
this is a mega social project because this film should be shown everywhere. I think that we will organize a uh, special press conference about this and we'll look for socially responsible companies and maybe some funds who will uh, want to realize this opportunity at the Expo. A question from me. You plan to go there by the end of uh, summer and you'll talk, you'll work with the Ukrainian companies. What would you say? How many people should be in the Ukrainian delegation and uh, which sectors you would like to show the world as far as Ukraine is concerned? As Svetlana has said very clearly, we give an opportunity, we provide an opportunity. What we were talking about is about the three days of culture. If we have three or four collective uh, groups per day who would sing and dance, do something, uh, some contests about cuisine, I remind you that the message of the exhibition is Feed the Planet Energy for Life. If there are three, four to five collectives per day, this would, will be normal. If more, then we'll, we'll have to change them in turns we have to see what the specific collectives are. We are waiting for a uh, experienced huge partner who have uh, an opportunity to organize conferences, who know their companies, who could uh, show us and tell us who can participate. I think that this is six to ten uh, companies, although this is not a professional view. As far as the week of Ukraine is concerned, at the moment we are talking to a owner of one of the pavilions that is without an owner now, owner now after the, a huge Chinese company started to build it, but then they abandoned the building the construction, because the building of the pavilion costs approximately 5 million euro. At the stage of uh, construction, when uh, the basis, uh, basement uh, basis was laid down and some walls, the Chinese uh, abandoned the project. Alessandro Rosa, a uh, major Italian entrepreneur, decided to finish the construction in order to offer to everyone who wants to take part in Expo. We have talked to him at length. Uh, more or less successfully, but uh, regrettably uh, by the time of the Expo's opening, the negotiations finished with us telling him, sorry, Alexander, we don't have enough participants on the Ukrainian side to provide for the financial participation of these companies in the exhibition. That's why we went over to discussing another format of the participation of Ukrainian companies in Expo, and one of the formats is the week of Ukraine in this uh, exhibition. This is a very good pavilion there, but how many companies we will be able to bring there for this week will depend on uh, which companies will be active. But a very important moment is that several Italian companies are just waiting Ukrainian companies so that during this possible week of Ukraine, 
in the Alessandro Rosso Pavilion to talk to Ukrainian companies and uh, discuss opportunities for investment and all this kind of stuff. Afri everything depends on the on the active stance of Ukrainian companies whom we want to involve in this. Thank you. Any other questions? Mm, thank you very much. Uh, great many thanks. Uh, wish you every success. We hope that Ukrainian companies will heed you and Ukraine will be well represented at Expo 25. And uh, our next briefing is at half.